when you started running, um, that was back in Narromine where you grew up in central west New South Wales. Um, mm -hmm. You were nine years old when the legendary Olympic coach Jackie Burns stumbled <laughs> upon you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that stage in your life and what you remember about Jackie? Absolutely. Well, yeah, I was um, grew up on a sheep and wheat farm and um, and like my brother, you know, my brother, David, him and I, you know, would work on the farm, we'd round up the sheep, you know, it, it was really quite funny because even then I was quite, com quite competitive and tried to beat the sheep dogs, um, which of course I never did. And, um, and then I went to school in Narromine when I was in primary school, I was in kindergarten, I beat a couple of kids, uh, no, I beat some kids who were a couple of years older than me. So this man called Gary came up to mum and dad and said, why don't you get Mel involved in little athletics? And I thought, okay. They, so they came and spoke to me and I thought, oh, that sounds good. Somewhere I can go and run each week. So I joined little athletics and I loved it. Um, and then I, of course, the next thing you need, if you want to be able to improve in it, you need to train. So I tell the story that, you know, this big city coach came to town. Her name's Jackie Burns, as you said. And, um, she um, ended up being the, at the time, New South Wales Little Athletics Coaching Director. And she coached other kids in the area by correspondence. So, um, and so I, was, I was at the age, I think it was about eight and a half. And I remember getting her number and calling her up and said, hello, Jackie Burns. My name's Melinda Gaines. But I said, would you please coach me? <laughs> so my mum and dad made me do it. And she said, well, I'll come down and have a look at you at Little Athletics on Saturday. So it was Trangy Little Athletics. So Trangy is even a smaller town than Narromine. Um, so I went there on the Saturday, was really nervous, took off, showed off like no tomorrow, um, doing all the things you shouldn't, looking around, et cetera. <laughs> and uh, then she said, I'll give you a call. And honestly, it felt like hours and hours, but she finally called me and she said, Mel, I'd love to coach you. So we were athlete and coach together for 23 years and went to those three Olympics together. So it's a, it was a very, um, very special partnership. And uh, yeah, she's like a second mum to me. So um, it's, it's something that I'm really proud of from the both of us, actually. Yeah, she's gorgeous. I can imagine that'd be such a special relationship to spend mm -hmm. that long and to go from nine years old through to your, your three Olympics, as we spoke about with Barcelona, mm -hmm. Atlanta. Um, Sydney yeah it's pretty special in terms of uh, after you know meeting Jackie you moved to um, Potts Point and you're boarding mm -hmm. at St Vincent's um, to progress okay. your career what was it like moving from you know western New South Wales to the big smoke at such a, a young age how was that um, it, it was pretty hard actually um, and one of the things that people don't really realize is that running is a very technical event. So when you, you know, for me to improve, I needed to be with Jackie. So, you know, in the old days, we didn't have our iPhones like you do now. And you can, you know, sit there and send videos left, right and center of an athlete. So I had to be with Jackie. Um, I, I did find it very hard at St. Vincent's because, you know, people listening, you know, Potts Points right next to King's Cross. I've gone from thousands of acres to um, an area that was very small. Um, I got very homesick uh, as well. And then when I was about, because of 14, I was running, you know, pretty well. At the time, I ran like a 23.8, which was a very quick time. And, um, and then I went through a massive growth spurt. And this is the beginning of my injuries we keep talking about. <laughs> And I got stress fractures in my shins and um, I was out of the sport for two years. So I found that time really difficult. I actually call it my beach ball phase because I took comfort in um, boarding school food and also um, in uh, canteen food or tuck shop food, we used to call it. Like we all did, really? Yeah, that's right. And then because I couldn't do sport, you know, I was away from home. I couldn't do sport. I couldn't do what I loved for two years so I, that was a really really tough time but I do look back on it now and I always say and I tell everyone this it was only probably because of Jackie that I kept in the sport because she never gave up on me she kept on going okay let's try and get into the pool you know there's when you do have injuries there's um, a lot of other cross training that you can do to help you to get back and get fitting so she get fit again so she never gave up on me so um yeah I was very lucky to have her there yeah, it's an incredible story. And 
I guess moving to Potts Point, were you running at ES Marks or where, where were you? No, at? I actually had to, I like, they were really big into um, study time. So I literally only had 40 minutes to study and it took me 10 minutes to run, walk down to Rush Butters, Rush, Rush Cutters Bay, Bay yeah. Oval, and then 10 minutes to walk back. So oh, there wasn't wow. a whole lot of training yeah. going on. It's very, things are very different to these days. I mean, you wouldn't have that situation. You would be able to go to, um, you would be able to go to probably ES Marks and stuff. But no, I was doing it on a nice, it was a very pretty oval, mind you. Things I saw on the way down there was interesting, I have to admit, being in King's Cross. But um, yeah, no. <laughs> and you had a rapid an interesting rise time. to success. You were at the age of 14, you were the mm -hmm. ranked world number one for the 100 meter sprint uh, female, mm. female sprinters at just age 14. Was that, that wasn't overall, was it? That was for your age category. Was yeah, it was for my age category. Yeah. yeah. And I think it was, I don't know if it was the 100 or the 200, but one of those events, yes, I was at the time. Um, yeah. So, yeah, but then I just, you know, this is the thing, and I'm noticing it too with a lot of young athletes. You know, um, you know, things can change as you go through puberty and going through growth spurts and things like that. You've just got to be very careful within those times just to make sure you, you know, protect yourself. And, um, you know, I'm learning that as a coach now with my athletes, um, learning what to do and not to do throughout those, at those times because, you know, it's, our bodies are changing and there's so much going on. Things like early specialization now are such a big thing as well. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Like things at, are. You look at young gymnasts as well and the number of injuries they develop because they specialize mm -hmm. in their sport at such an early age. So. Yeah. yeah. It's funny, but then sometimes too, what I find with athletes, like with a lot of the young ones that if, especially if they can run, they do so many sports and which is great you should do a lot of sports but the problem is is if they get into these teams or rep teams no other coaches are asking what that athlete had done the day before so for example if an athlete comes to me I'll go what are you doing all week what did you do all weekend well they had a whole day of um you know doing gala days they shouldn't probably be training with me and that's what's hard when they're doing a whole lot of sports because they're all training them hard but the problem if you're doing three or four sports then they're all training hard so that's not good either so there's a real fine line i must be it's got to be a bit of a balance 